Hello, happy October, happy first of the month. We have Chameleon and Parrot. I hope you're doing well. I want to thank all of you that sent me birthday wishes. That's very sweet of you. If there are any other Libra twins out there, let me know. Um, to be honest, I will say that a very, like, most of the readings I do privately, the birthday situation is crazily mirrored to my own. Okay, so let's see what we got here on this. It's a dark moon today. Bobcat, life is a mystery. Turkey, give with gratitude. Potter, you are never alone. Parrot again on the bottom. So again, we're being told to watch your words. <clears throat> I will say I have felt like... <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> the... Um... I've almost felt like it was Mercury retrograde. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. somebody's got something to say and somebody wants, is going to try to be giving with you let's see what it is the nine of wands interesting seven of cups <sighs> every time I kind of tap into the masculine's energy there's this feeling I get of, that I feel from the feminine wow look at that ten of cups ten of pentacles so it's a dark moon today too I said that I think but I get this feeling like the feminine wow is one um, has hope that they've done a lot of healing and I don't feel like they have Nine of Swords falls out. Um, I feel like they're kind of... I'm trying to get the right word. Four of Cups, Eight of Pentacles. King of Wands, Eight of Pentacles. Ace of Swords, King of Wands. He definitely has something to say. I feel like they still haven't really understood or understand why healing, what it is exactly almost. That's the feeling I'm getting. Nine of Pentacles, Two of Wands, Six of Wands, the star in reverse again. Ace of Wands reverse wheel of fortune emperor tower six of pentacles knight of cups oh my god look high priestess in the sun that's my sun and moon that's crazy okay the sun is it it's my card actually of destiny that's that's crazy right there. Okay, Ten of Pentacles, again, bottom of the deck. Queen of Cups, the Devil, Knight of Swords. The Devil's been coming up a lot due to fears lately. I'm not sure why I've been wanting to get these after the animal, and then I haven't been doing them until after the shuffle. Um, so, first things first, I'll say, you know... There's a sort of reflection that the masculine is having right now of, you know, you may be nearing a date, an important date, like the day you met, a birthday, some kind of anniversary like that. Maybe for some of you, like the anniversary of like, uh, what do you call it? Soul recognition or talking about, like, I think we're twins, like, you know. 
That's crazy. I said that and it said acknowledge divine order. Take responsibility and practice patience. Um, I get that there's like a marking of a passage of time here. Why do I get that? Well, we have three suns, a moon, and then the Wheel of Fortune. A lot of things that weren't clear to him before have become clear to him. And he's aware of like how uncareful he was, how just, uh, it's not the right word, careless he was with his words. And you took that to mean in a lot of ways that it didn't matter, but that's not true. The chosen one, fast track to ascension. And it's the first today. Nine, nine unification, aligning with abundance. Two, two spiritual awakening, shift or be shifted. I get the feeling that he feels like he was shifted honor your agreement, mission, and emotion. Wow, that's quite a card. I don't think that's cards ever come out before. There is a certain honor, right? The word night has been coming up again and again and again the last couple days. So, a very interesting chain of events has occurred. It's very strange. If I told it all to you, you'd be like, this, you're so weird. <laughs> but the word freelance has come up again and again and again. And too many times to kind of be just a coincidence. And what freelance means is not in, in not tied to any particular night, right? It's actually a lance, a warrior, a mercenary, that was free to do battle as an independent person. So not like payroll, not. And so why is this important? There is this mission that he has become aware of regarding you. I think he really had a vision of himself. Kind of, it, it's coming up as a strong vision through the eyes of his father. may or may not be, but it's the masculine energy kind of put a strong imprint down on, I want you to be this way. And I think there's been a very dominating role in his life of not being able to speak his truth. Until, until, until he met you. And then you awoke something in him. Keep looking at this card. I keep seeing four, two, two, two. Six of wands, right? Four and two make six. It's the number of Venus. This is my Empress card. You woke something in him that was very, it's this fast, fast track to Ascension, right? It's like, I don't know. I'm, they're giving me Cinderella. You know, swords, community, permission, you know. Kind of being told you are just this 
in a way servant, but it's just like this parent that's like not allowing you to speak your truth, not allowing you to be yourself. And you're, you are this immortal spirit that's come into this body to live this truth of being this emperor here, right? I mean, we had actually Hierophant on the bottom of the deck yesterday. But let's, for the sake of it, say emperor, because we have this card. Which to me is like the highest card of, of the physical realm. The temple path. master of the physical realm you know and then all of a sudden this high priestess comes and just basically it's like the hand of god just shaking your heart i know that's very dramatic but look at these cards Thirty-three and eleven, by the way, and twenty-nine. Another high priestess. Just immediate, like one day, this woman, female, feminine energy. Sorry, feminine energy shows up, and in like, this is very dramatic. So take it as you will. With one glance. Kind of breaks apart like the fibers of your being who you believe you were from the time you got here on this earth what do you do with that knowing you know if you're an avoidant you run as fast as you can away from it because definitely not prepared to be, right? To be this emperor. We're definitely not prepared to be that. He's looking back on his choices and, and with regret. And there has been quite a feeling of not being hopeful that there could be like this reconciliation of give and take of equality, of, of restoration to this. You know, he's aware you gave more and he gave less and he's aware that you were hurt by his avoidance of the truth. <sighs> I mean, there's a real feeling here. We have paradise and the emperor, both in reverse. And you know, the sun showed up under the high priestess, behind you, like, and these two moons here are also here. Like there's um, an understanding of the duality of this relationship. It's like an innate knowledge almost. Interesting. I think that came up in the same position yesterday. It's almost like he's just decided to take all of like, he's like this, you know, he's like this hot air balloon or this spiritual being trapped by all this heavy weight to the earth. And it's almost like he's just taken off all of the weight 
in one day. Even the Ace of Wands is, is pointing up. There's part of him that wants to move up immediately, like straight to the top. I don't understand. I don't know why this is coming through like this, but I do know he's decided or he has felt that he's spent enough time at the bottom to know what he needs to know. Now it is sort of crazy that we have the Phoenix in reverse. So it says new phase, rekindle, renew, transformation, growth, and changed mind. And that's over this line here where I was reading. There's a loss of hope that it could be rekindled. There's a loss of hope that it could be transformed. There is a loss of hope for him. There has been a loss of hope that this soul contract and that is coming through really really strongly like I don't talk about that very often that two cards here speak directly to a contract and agreement and then you have wedding rings so if there is a marriage involved in your mix somehow, this is a heavy thing on his mind. Understanding what it all means and why and all of that. But I also think because these came up in reference to the soul contract, right? There is part of this relationship, the twin flame journey that, and I remember one of the very first books I read, like, I can't remember the name of it now, but it like just changed my life so much in understanding that this is you know beyond this world that doesn't mean that your worldly agreements and your contracts and your vows don't aren't still here because they are this is just a different level like they're not the same thing and each person on every you know all journeys are different. There isn't one. There's not a blueprint. You're going to have to make your own soul choices in how you deal with all of those things. But he is very aware now that there is a, there is a binding contract and agreement between you two. And that you two have this mission set in motion. My understanding from my teachers is that this particular lifetime is not the lifetime that you accomplish your mission. You may have a different agreement, you know, a different viewpoint than that, but it's fine. Um, I'm not really here to tell you like how to live your journey. I'm really just trying to provide guidance for you to understand what I see in the collective. So, if you're still viewing the pain that he brought you as something very devastating, there really needs to be work done around that. And I know like, I've been gone through it myself that it comes and goes, right? One day we may be fine and feel like it's not a big deal. And then the next, it may feel like just this heart, heartbreak. That's so still so fresh and so painful. 
and everyone kind of has a different thing but the truth is it's like the lesson of that is that it really isn't about you at all right that's what we're learning it's really not about us okay that energy feels very heavy um you know, I think there's nothing more controversial than this idea of unconditional love that we could love someone that hurts us. And honestly, that all boils down to the fact that we need to find unconditional love for ourselves very first and foremost. And always understand that, you know, the love that we give and that we have is not, I mean, my understanding of the twin flame journey is that we are finding a way towards unconditional love, meaning we can love people not based on their performance, not based on how well they meet criteria, not based on how they meet our needs, but for who they are and allow them to be who they are and understand that The human experience isn't about no, this is a difficult subject to talk about. It's not about being flawless. It's about learning to be authentic and love ourselves. And that does include that we feel you know heartbroken and we do hurt people not intentionally but it is the case that the, the goal here is not to be perfect and have no nothing ever go wrong and nothing ever hurt and nothing you know, experience no pain but to understand that we are so resilient you know um We will weather any kind of storm. We will weather any kind of pain. And, you know, that paradise of heaven is our own creation here based upon allowing ourselves to be in this very high vibrational state despite the fact that Not everything is perfect. Not everything is, you know, it's very interesting how much we've talked over the last like five or 10 years about the separation of consciousness, right? The 3D and the 5D. And of course that implies also the 4D because it's, it is there that the ascension that happens is that we learn to live in a fifth dimensional state while still here in the third dimension. That we learn to live in the fifth dimensional state, which is an unconditional love and non-judgment. So much of our rational brain hears me talking about that and thinks all of the things of like, that a 3D matrix person would judge a 5D person for being careless, for not caring, for all of these things we're afraid of being, right? And the spiritual awakening here is that we are all, that we're going towards is this vortex of our wealth, our vortex of our happiness, the vortex of all of the things that can be here for everyone where are you going with this? Okay. Um, is that we realize it's far more responsible to do the work of ascension to benefit most especially those that are in the lower frequencies. Right? We can't do the work for them, but doing our own work actually elevates everyone. And the higher up you get, you know, the more powerful you are because it's exponential. Um, 
and it's just natural that the higher up you are in frequency, I get it, um, is the more responsibility you actually have. Like, you, it's not have, but you are. You are more responsible. Why? Because you are better able to respond. You aren't triggered by lower frequencies. Someone could come to you and say like, you know, the famous one that uh, Julian himself uses is like, if you don't have blue hair and someone comes to you and is like, I don't like your blue hair, it's so ugly. You're not gonna be triggered by that, right? Because you know you don't have blue hair and this isn't actually applying to you. And so if someone comes to you and, and says, I don't like that you're selfish. I don't like that you don't care about the people who are suffering down here. You're only triggered by that if you're afraid that you're selfish and you don't understand what you're actually doing, right? You don't understand that your ascension actually benefits all of humanity greatly and that you can't stay poor or sick or sad enough to help those who are poor and sick and sad, right? That doesn't do anything for anybody. It doesn't do anything for you. Like we have to take responsibility for our own frequency and vibration. And in a lot of ways, I don't know why they're bringing up the Merkaba, but that's a lot of what the Merkaba is, is like, it's this, the meeting of the, the star here, right? It's the masculine feminine triangles that we saw yesterday in the Star of David, right? Or there, there are many other symbols with it, but that's the one I know the best. And that it is an ascension device. It's a transportation device. It's a, it's a movement device that you, is your higher self. Okay, so let's move on. That was a big, chunky, very deep <laughs> uh, channeling right there. I got lost in it for a second. Um, it's funny, it's like you can feel when you channel, uh, if you channel something quite high or frequency, you kind of have to disassociate from the world for a minute. It's interesting. So yeah, crystalline frequency. So it's all this beautiful crystalline frequency, <laughs> magician and gold. Um, all this beautiful energy of Atlantis and Lemuria. Lemuria came out yesterday. I feel this one, Sphinx, beautiful. Aquarius, I'm like so called to go to Egypt right now. You see through my mask, stand off. Hurting you hurt me more than I ever imagined it would. This is a very important card. So we have Venus. They are in their magician energy. They are manifesting you. I, I feel like a very sweet forehead kiss right now it's for someone. Serious, that's for you. That's lovely, it's very sweet. It's almost like angelic and it's fool's gold, Pluto. Pluto being pretty he heavily activated this month. I know I treat you badly. I'm too proud to say I'm sorry. I know I treated you badly. I'm too proud to say I'm sorry. I actually think they're gonna get over this the minute you just forgive and release it. That's what I'm feeling. I, they're just showing me like letting go of those balloons and I, it's kind of opposite of what they, they showed me with the ascension with the hot air balloon, balloon but it's kind of like linked together. I don't know why. Okay, listen to the music, think how it was. I'm curious what you're doing. You changed me seeing signs and I'm planning to surprise you. There we have it, Lemurian. Feeling insecure, I actually think he's gonna get over that. I feel very strongly. It's gonna get over that. Fairies, I bought you some flowers and I couldn't do it. He just might do it. I looked up Twin Flames. And it's more than lift up twin flames. Something is telling me to talk to you. That something, that something is his own, like, is your soul. 
like your soul determines when if it's not from the ego right so having done this little dance for a while now i can tell you that the difference between like acting when you are soul led and acting when you're ego led and with ego it's like this is a very nervous energy and with soul it's just flat and I know that's really not what anybody wants to hear but you have to remember the world of soulmates and what we would call romantic love in the 3d is all ego none of it is unconditional none of it is at a high frequency there may be soulmates in your life that act to protect you. And even they aren't at that frequency of unconditional love. They do what they need to do because they are your soulmate and it is a contract. Tap into imagination. Cancer, so that's the Merkaba. Ho'oponopono, I write text and delete them. Pisces, Violet Flame, Emerald, Owl, Sun, and then bottom of the deck, Paper Money, Leo, You're Too Beautiful, Go For It, The Void. So it is a dark moon today. It's a void moon. What do you want me to see here? I don't know. Okay. Um, so the colors of purple and green, did I not get my color cards? I did not. The colors of purple and green are coming through here <coughs> very highly. It's this beautiful violet color. I don't know. I feel like some of you could get purple flowers, purple roses, may see purple flowers, a purple vine. This may be some symbol to you. If you see that, it may be a sign that they're thinking of you. Something important here. Green, silver, pink. Copper, pink, maybe pink roses too. Cyan, I'm just getting this violet color really strongly. Salmon, pink, <laughs> red, orange, blue, aqua, brown, and violet. So there's a really otherworldly energy coming through of how strongly they're feeling pulled to you telepathically, pulled to you and manifesting you. It's like an activation on a soul star chakra level. Like I feel the soul star chakra very, very strongly with this silver and blue. The soul star is kind of that Aquarian Piscean energy that's connects us to the galactic center, which is being activated right now. The galactic center that has a kind of bigger mission than just the this world's mission, right? So I talked about the father's influence on him. I talked about the protection that you may this is such a weird thing to say if you're feminine, but it's like, strangely enough, you may have a masculine in your life that almost protects you as like a foster mother or a, a shield. I mean, if that's for you, you'll know right away what I'm talking about. It's not, don't make it fit if it doesn't. Um, and in a strange way, your masculine is sensitive to that. because there is this element 
of yes, you are divinely protected, but it's not like you're not vulnerable. And the more visible your energy field becomes, the more vulnerable you become. So that isn't at all to scare you at all. That is to tell you that the other realms are aware of you, your light becoming brighter. And as your light becomes brighter, you do become more protected. But it's also, again, you're taking on an increased ability to respond. You're taking on an increased, it's like I was talking about, again, we have the pink card right in the middle here. It's like, this is your inner child and these are all these forces around you that allow you to be both vulnerable and like responsible at the highest level. A lot of twins have such challenging childhoods in their own way. Um, you know, just not feeling, oh, these were the two cards I was talking about yesterday and they came out again side by side. Um, you know, you're right here to overcome this limitation that you feel. It's like that window that I talked about being pressed against. It's right there. You're right there. Internalizing. This is going to sound like I'm a lunatic. Um, internalizing your role as a chosen one is very important to you now. Not in any way of I am better than anyone, I am above anyone, I am special. It's actually literally this agreement of this code, this agreement of this mission, this agreement of this contract, this agreement of this bond is like there's nothing more in agreement than that with humanity. And agreeing that everyone human is spiritual. So I personally just don't get caught up in all of the nonsense. And I'm not judging anyone because I have been I have done a lot of spiritual, like, exploration, um, but it's like, we don't need to go, when we're mentally figuring out things, this is fear energy. I'm not telling you to be unaware of your life or what goes on in it, because we still have to respond, we have to be responsible, but... You don't need to go unearthing every truth about walk-ins and soul, you know, tie, all of this stuff. You don't need to go figure it all out. It's an endless, there's endless rabbit holes because it's meant to placate your fears, your mind. It's meant to like give your mind something to chew on that's a distraction from the actual work you have to do, which is ascension work, okay? Which is honoring your inner child, which is honoring becoming unconditional love, which is honoring your own divinity, your own, like, I'm gonna say some things and you can take them for what you want. And if they resonate with you, you'll, you'll know instantly because these are things that I've felt in the collective for a while. And it's like, Maybe you need to co say sorry to some people. Maybe you need to donate some money. Maybe you need to go donate some time. Maybe you need to give away some of your belongings. Maybe you need to catch up with that person that you know needs you 
needs a little bit of your light, needs a little bit of sunshine. Maybe you need to go visit your grandparents. Maybe you need to do some things to give instead of sitting there and thinking, why isn't anybody recognizing what I'm going through? Like, I think that's the shift that they're talking about right here. It's because we're coming, the glass, okay, they're making it known to me, like this glass window is recognizing the wholeness. Wow, this is gonna make me cry, this is so intense. So if you want your masculine and feminine energies to be merged, Then merge them. That means you recognize that you are fully and 100% able to provide everything you need in your own existence. Everything you emotionally need, everything you physically need, be that person. Stop talking about being in your feminine energy, being in your masculine energy, what you didn't get, who's not giving you what, who's not recognizing your pain. Like, become sovereign, become self-validating, and step into your power. So, holy guacamole, I was not prepared for that type of message. And like, talk about cosmic father coming to give us a dose of like wow that was intense okay I want my immunology cards and I'm not seeing them these aren't them um did I move them are they under something else want those. Huh. Sometimes I can be like looking directly at things and not see them. Sorry, I have to integrate that message because it was so insane for a second. Well, I guess I took them off my table. Where I used them yesterday. Okay, we'll get a couple of those. That stock looks really big, but it's not stock. Okay. And I guess one of the things that's coming through is like stop. Stop paying attention to everything that's not what you want to be. Flow, letting go, natural movement, inner conflict, morality, conscious choice, angelic help, miraculous aid, integrity, compromise, assistance, control, authentic purpose, inspiration, and free will. Bottom of the deck is the fire prince. Optimism and aggression. So, wow. Again, I feel a very strong presence assisting you, not only in the angelic realm, also in like, This Lemurian, Mermadian, emotional realm and in the earthly realm. I feel strong air, water, and fire action. And if it's time, then it's time to take action. Patience, darkness, so the void moon. 
and the masculine. Holy moly. And look at change. Look at these cards that just came out. Like I've told you twice now, there's a dark moon today and an eclipse tomorrow. Look at this. This is crazy. So we have, you know, four moons here. I feel like what you've been waiting for is here. So make sure that you're aligned internally. You know what you want, why you want it, and that you're moving with a lot of integrity. I try to really address your moral conflict before you make any movement. I mean, I think that's what we've been doing forever. I need you back in my life. I can picture a life with you. Will you ever forgive me? My fears keep stopping me. I feel you pulling away. Have you moved on? I'm trying to trust in divine timing. I miss you. Can't stand not talking to you. I'm battling addictions. I've had very vivid dreams of you and all I do, all I want to do is talk to you. Trust me. Let my dear, oh my God, doubts and fears get the best of me. I mean, the more you face your fears and trust, the better it will be. The more he will be kind of drawn to you. Because I think any fear that's still there, it's kind of this, reverse six of wands energy it's like will I be rejected will I be you know what will happen what will happen if I act on these strong feelings I'm having the more you face your own fears, the more he will face his fears. Some of you friends may be kind of playing a pivotal role in this coming back together, destiny, yod. That's this period right now, I believe, Pisces, I believe. Six house routine. Routine and I would almost say like, you know, that's opposite of the friends of the 11th and networks, but I would almost, like when I was saying friends may play, see there's a flower of life, this is pointing forward. I would almost say if your routines are changing, like your everyday places you go, people you hang out with, things you do, the gym, whatever, that may play a role in this, but it also may be It may be an upgrade. It may be like a, a more healed version of you plays a role. Like your healing actually plays a role. And in your healing, you just aren't aligning with the places and people that you used to. And this reinvention, right, of you. It's like this kind of gets the attention of your networks. This kind of gets the attention of your friends. This kind of gets people talking. And this may be, um, the two cards of Mercury here, fifth house, right? I said fifth house and 12th house. I feel like try not to avoid and escape things as best you can. Try to take that opportunity to face the things that need to be dealt with. 
this seems to be a very important message. We always had Aries, we had Pisces, we had Libra, we had um, Chiron, Sun, Mercury twice. Yeah, I said Aries, okay. Um, so what he wants most of all is for hope to return. I feel like he is feeling very hopeless and very, like, stuck. And that may be just mainly in his heart space and not, like, in his life. But it could be different for all of them. Awareness. Abundance. He's had two cards of abundance and innocence. Action again. So inner child and action, delight. I feel like you should take time today and this week to do things that cause, count your blessings, take pleasure in simple things, get into a practice of expecting the best, however that is for you. It says, live in the moment, be conscious of your thoughts, look for signs and guidance. Enjoy the beauty of life. Your supply is unlimited. Blessings are coming. Take time to play. Nurture your inner child. Grandparent card fell out. And I mentioned that. Nurture your inner child. Live with childlike sense of wonder. Now is the perfect time to act. Take inspired action towards your dreams. Move forward with confidence. Relax. Everything is okay. Don't worry. It's going to be fine. Let go of stress. Don't take it. I was hoping this card would come out. Don't take on other people's stress. Breathe it out now. You are intelligent and talented and gifted. Hello and goodbye. You'll soon see that this change will make things better. Happy thoughts and listen to your feelings. I do think a lot of you are having those changes that I talked about in your everyday kind of reality. And it may be coming up because there's some resistance to it. Boundaries, independent, golden opportunity, and blossoming. Expect a miracle. And I did talk about the fact that becoming an independent sovereign being right now is very important. Love yourself enough to say no to others' demands on your time and energy. So these are all advice and guidance from Ascended Masters, Unicorns, and Gemstones. You can call these into your frequency or just use them or however you'd like. You can actually use the, the stones if you want. Labradorite, take action. Third time creativity and shine and then petrified wood we have ancestors again so some of you are very called to either connect with your ancestors in the spirit realm or visit your grandparents or you know connect with them however you see fit oops i was gonna skip the dragons labradorite is an interesting stone to come out I do feel like it's a pretty masculine stone for some reason, although it has a lot of feminine attributes. It's just an interesting stone. You got Source Dragon, most powerful dragon in the deck. Thor's Dragon, very powerful. Royal Blue and Gold Dragon, super powerful. And then Kuan Yin, beautiful pink dragon on the bottom. So for you, it tunes to the infinite, be still in the silence, magic can happen, be in the moment. He has, protects you in times of change. A time of rapid transition and transformation. Relax, you are safe. And then in between, strengthens you to stand in your power with wisdom. Beautiful. The sword of truth. Awakens you to your own majesty. Wear a cloak of pride and power. <laughs> it's like I'll have this intense, intense download that will like move me to tears, right? And then by the time I go to upload it and I have to then title it, I will forget all of it. It's so crazy. Brings you love that resets your karmic balance. 
sees you or all your cords dissolve by transcendent love. And this may be a really great day for you or tomorrow. Like do your blessings on your house today. And then, you know, you don't want to manifest on an eclipse because it's chaotic unless you're like a chaos witch. And then I would say yes, but it may be a great day to dissolve the unwanted energies around you or the cords. See all your courts is all by transcendent love. Enjoy your freedom and look for the divine around you. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm just, I already shuffled these. Deep in your heart, you already know the answer. Do what feels right. A message for you. I think he's going to send you a sign or a message telepathically or otherwise. I'm thinking of you at this very moment. Your love fills me with light. I love you. If you could do anything, what would it be? The answer dwells in your heart, not in your mind, for the heart is the gateway to the soul. It's important right now to take a step back and spend time alone instead of placing your focus on another. Now is the time to give to yourself. And also, wait. Don't rush into it. Um, so we have both action and patience and waiting. And it's going to be up to you to determine when is your soul-led right time to act. Of course, no one can really tell you when that is. You have to feel that for yourself. So thank you for being here with me today on my special day. And thank you for all the love and all the comments and the joy and the happiness that I know and I feel with you just knowing that others are on this journey too. And yeah, it gets very difficult sometimes, but it's also a blessing and I just thank you so, so very much. Sending lots of love. Bye.